name is Dimitrios Davalos. Uh, that's D-I-M-I-T-R-I-O-S, D-A-V-A-L-O-S. Um, I'm a staff research scientist at the Gladstone Institute uh, at the University of California, San Francisco. Uh, the associate director of the Center for In Vivo Imaging Research there, um, which is where we uh, perform the, the studies related to MS. So uh, my primary focus uh, when it comes to MS research is um, the study of uh, how, how, the, how the disease process begins. Um, our brain is, uh, is our most valuable organ, if you will, and uh, for that reason uh, nature has evolved ways to protect it. For example, from the environment it's protected because it's uh, shielded by uh, a thick bone helmet, namely our head, uh, our skull. Uh, so it cannot be damaged easily. Uh, internally, it is also, uh, there, are, there are also different layers of protection that our uh, brain is kept uh, intact uh, through. And those would be, um, one is the, what is called the blood-brain barrier, which is a, a mechanism by which uh, things that circulate in our blood do not uh, freely enter in the brain uh, because some of them do not belong there. Now, our blood vessels deliver uh, all the essential elements that we need to survive, like oxygen, food, uh, and all sorts of things that our brain requires for normal function. But there are other things, uh, cells and proteins, and um, uh, things that could find themselves in our blood, um, uh, even following an infection, for example, that should not uh, freely enter the brain and cause damage. For that reason, we have this uh, structure called the blood-brain barrier that is basically the walls of our vessels in our, um, in our brains are very well, very, uh, very tightly regulated and they, they allow specific things to come in and, and let other things pass by and not get in. Um, another mechanism by which our brain is protected is uh, it has developed to have its own immune cells. Uh, it's something like a local police system, if you will that constantly surveys uh, the environment and makes sure that uh, everything that is in the brain belongs there and that everything is structurally intact. Uh, so if something were to go wrong, these cells would be the first responders. They are constantly there, they're looking around. They're in my brain and yours right now and they're making sure everything is normal. Um, so uh, in, a, in multiple sclerosis, what happens, uh, the, the earliest findings that we find, if we if we look at people even before they know they, they knew they had the, the disease and they have no symptoms, we find signs that this blood-brain barrier gets disrupted, uh, and it, it actually just allows things to, to leak through. Not necessarily hemorrhage, not anything major, but it's just not as tightly regulated. So things in the blood that should not be there normally uh, find their way in, and uh, we found that that <coughs> that actually activates these microglia cells, this uh, local police uh, policemen uh, of our brain. They're the first to pick it up that this doesn't belong here, and they become activated. And they go towards those vessels that uh, start leaking, and they cluster in areas exactly where uh, these blood proteins that normally do not belong in the brain deposit around these vessels. So what we found is um, we describe this process, uh, how, how it starts and how it begins, and we try to link the molecules from the, uh, from the blood circulation with uh, the, uh, the microglia cells that uh, are the first cells, like I said, that uh, get tipped off. And uh, to do this, we, um, uh, we, uh, we use uh, this advanced imaging technique, um, which is uh, called two-photon microscopy, uh, and it takes advantage of uh, specialized uh, microscopy equipment that, uh, and, uh, and advanced lasers that allow us to uh, shine light inside uh, living brains and look at individual cells that are labeled to be fluorescent. And uh, we can essentially follow how they behave throughout the progression of the disease. So it's basically like having an ability to, uh, to spy on the process uh, from the moment it begins to, uh, to the moment where it causes damage. Uh, and uh, I think that's, uh, that's, a, that's a big technological and, uh, and, uh, and scientific breakthrough to be able to, um, to follow the process, the disease process over time and uh, identify key players both at the molecular level from the blood coming in and other molecular level and other molecular players uh, and at the cellular level how cells that are involved with the disease as, as we understand it um, the sequence of events, how, which one gets activated first, when others come in, and how does that uh, eventually link to, uh, to axonal damage, the neuronal death that we have that causes paralysis in people. 
The, uh, we, we are uh, the group that I uh, have been working with uh, has, uh, has focused on actually targeting this process. And uh, uh, Dr. Katerina Kasoglu, who, uh, who was my mentor for my postdoctoral studies, um, her lab is, is focused on, on studying how to uh, develop a targeted therapy for this process that I described to you. It's a very exciting time for the lab. So um, we know that uh, there, is, there is genetic predisposition. There's a lot of genetic studies that uh, continuously identify um, new genes that we think may be related uh, to why some people get uh, the disease while others do not. Uh, so it is, it is clear that you have to have some genetic predisposition. Um, however, it, that is not sufficient. Uh, you need also some, uh, some sort of an environmental trigger that in combination with the predisposition might set things off. Um, we don't know, like you mentioned, we don't know exactly why this whole process uh, happens, but we, we, we know enough to understand uh, some of the mechanisms. Like once it gets uh, set off, we, we now have the ability to see uh, what, ha what happens when and what key players, uh, what the involvement of key players is and at what time. I think that is going to be extremely uh, important and informative for us to, to uh, pick the, the good targets to go after, like the, the, the key steps and the key targets, like we need to control this cell because it does this at this time point, and we need to uh, follow uh, this, this, this interaction of cells, or we need to uh, target this molecule because this is what turns on a particular stage uh, of the disease uh, development. Now, downstream of all of this is, of course, the neuronal cells. These are the uh, end target, and this is one of the things that I, uh, I was supported by the Nancy Davis uh, Foundation to, uh, to study, and we're looking at how these uh, immune cells that get uh, first activated uh, in, the, in the brain, how they, um, they, can, uh, they can cause uh, the, the neuronal damage that eventually causes the paralysis. And this has uh, actually uh, allowed us to uh, take this one step further to link it to the lesion formation and the, and the disease. So uh, I, I'm, I'm very much interested in, uh, uh, in studying further this, uh, these early events uh, at the blood-brain barrier. Um, uh, we, we really do not know why, uh, but I think there is still a lot to learn uh, from studying this process. Uh, as early as we can actually pick up the first signs that something at some level starts uh, going wrong. Uh, so I'm focusing at that. I'm trying, trying to understand really going uh, constantly earlier. Uh, and, and the way we design our studies uh, defines essentially where we're looking at. So um, you have to ask the right question sometimes to find an answer that might be there all along. So we're trying to design our studies in a way that they will reveal uh, early triggering events at the sites where this happens. And my personal interest is around the vasculature. And at the same time, I want to link this with uh, these early events with how the location where eventually we have what we call a lesion, the site where the actual neuronal damage happens. Uh, so I think uh, following the steps and, and linking uh, elements and, and cellular players, key players uh, in the process, I think is, is going to be instrumental. And that is my main focus.